Hi, welcome here. It's Matt Newton here at Lytham Golf Academy. It's shaft testing time here, and I've got the new Titleist TS2 driver head and four of their stock shafts here. So we're going to take a little closer look today at the stock shafts that Titleist are offering their new driver, and maybe a little bit as to which shaft is trying to produce what sort of flight and maybe what sort of golf it's trying to sort of suit. I'm going to hit all four shafts here with the same head, TS2. I'm going to look at some numbers through GC2 HMT, and maybe just give you guys a bit of an idea of maybe which shaft you might possibly be looking to uh, put in your maybe your new Titleist driver. Okay, so just running through the shafts quickly here. The first one we've got is the Kurokagi, which is a 50 gram shaft, and this is from Mitsubishi. So a very lightweight shaft here that's promoting more of a sort of high launch and a sort of moderate spin number here. And this is featuring the new SFW, which is straight flight weight in here, which is all aimed at sort of reducing a fade ball flight. Then the next shaft available from Titleist is a Tensai Blue, which is AV series 55 gram, again from Mitsubishi, and, and again featuring the SFW technology here, the straight flight weighting to try and reduce those fade flights. So this is more of a mid launch and a mid spin shaft characteristic. And then we're moving into the Hazardous Smoke, which is a new shaft here offering. This is a 60 gram here, so five degree, uh, sorry, five grams heavier than the previous two shafts here, just going up in weight. So we've got more of a, a low to mid launch and a low spin sort of characteristics in this particular shaft. Now this is also available in an 80 gram heavy weight for maybe the slightly quicker swing speed and the stronger player. And then finally, we're moving into the Evenflow T1100 white, which is a 65 gram. So again, five, five grams more heavy than the previous one. This is from Project X, and this is a sort of a strong fibre construction here, which is a lot stiffer in, in, in the tip section here, which is offering a low launch and a low spin, maybe for the stronger player. And again, through custom option, this is available in an 85 gram for, again, even the quicker swing speed who wants a more stable shaft. Okay, so we're going to start off with the Kurokage here, which is the very lightweight one, 50 gram here with the SFW technology straight flight weight and trying to reduce that fade sort of shot. Now, as I said, I'm going to use the same head here, TS2, 9.5 degree, set at A1, so just standard 9.5 degree head here. Not, that isn't going to change, and the setting isn't going to change, but obviously the shafts are going to change here. Probably won't show you every single ball flight here from every shot, but we'll skip through these, and then we'll look at some numbers and see how the different shafts perform, and maybe what you'd expect to sort of see from these sort of shafts. And obviously I'll give you a little bit of feedback with a bit of feel here between these shafts as well. Okay, so that was a decent strike opening tee shot there. That went pretty high. Be interesting to sort of see the numbers on that particular one. Now, obviously, to me, this is probably the furthest away from what would suit me as a shaft. It's very light, probably playing a lot softer, maybe launch a little bit higher. Definitely sort of seeing that there. And be interesting to see those sort of spin numbers and how they change possibly between these shafts as we work through them. Yes, yeah, so that's definitely a higher ball flight there. Lovely straight tee shot there, to be honest. Just missing that line there. So 293, as many of you know, I'll hit the ball a little bit further than that. So, and that's spinning, yeah, around that sort of 3,000 miles. So definitely it's gonna see this higher spin, softer in that tip section here, lighting the weight, gonna get a lot more flex. That loft is gonna be really delivered into this for me, for my particular spin. As I say, this is probably the further away from the, the ideal shaft for me, but it's just gonna give you guys some sort of ideas here. So definitely feeling that lighter feel in there, which maybe is more suited for that slower swinger who, who needs to have that little bit of kick in the shaft to get it working from. Obviously with that SFW technology, they're helping maybe reduce that fade shot as, as it's many, so common for many golfers there. Um, and really sort of trying to get the, the, the sort of shaft to work for them and get that launch and get that spin to keep that ball in the air to maximize distance. Okay, that was a ripper in the last one there, but definitely seen that higher ball flight there. That could be quite a long ball, that actually. Yeah, that one's just creeping over 303. Cut that slightly high in the face. That'll probably just pull that spin down a little bit. 
but yeah, still in that 2,700 area. So definitely a shaft that's a little bit too light for me on that particular one there. Definitely feel a lot of movement in the head through the swing there. Maybe just feel like I'm gonna lose a little bit of control of that club face in terms of where it points at impact. Okay, so we're gonna switch over into the next shaft here, which is the Tensai in the 55 gram. Right, okay, so we switched into the Tensai Blue here, which is the AV series, 55 grams, so five grams heavier than the the Kurokage that I've just had in. And again, it's still got that SFW technology, which is helping introduce that fade uh, sort of ball flight. Now this shaft is, is a little bit more aimed at maybe sort of a mid launch and a sort of moderate spin here. So should maybe see this flight just come down a little bit against the previous shaft uh, in terms of its flight and its characteristics. Again, it's still in that lightweight bracket at 55 grams. So probably more for that player who needs to try and increase speed and try and get that, um, you know, increase that sort of launch and ball flight. Let's get this first one hit. Yeah, again, that feels good. I mean, this, the sound's great, which is obviously more the head here, but again, it's a higher ball flight there. That's gotta be dropping off a little bit. I can see that trying to stall in the air there for me. Um, so again, it's for that golf who, who needs that, maybe that help to get that ball in the air, who needs that spin on it to keep it in the air. And obviously uh, for a golfer, maybe at a slower swing speed than me here. So all these shafts that I'm using here are all 45 and a half inches in length, which is standard for tightest for their drivers. But obviously through custom fit, you can have this length pretty much at whatever you want. Uh, and they're all stiff flex. It's purely because I've only got stiff in every single option here. Uh, available so my spec is normally in X um, but again it's all equal for this particular test again not as high as that previous one there but still on that higher side bit straight on the shot there a little bit more distance than the previous one but again not obviously my longest category there 284 uh, and that one's spawn at, yeah, 3,300. So again, it's in that highest sort of bracket there in terms of that spin number. Yeah, okay, so I'm really struggling to control that one for me there. I've got a, a one going up the right, I've got one going down the left. A couple are all right. Spin looks to be high. Just feel like I've definitely got a, a, a you know, it's tougher for me to control that that club there. So I've got a feeling that's actually performing a little bit worse than that real light one there, to be honest. Okay, so we're going to switch the Tensai out and put the uh, hazardous smoke in, and then we'll hit some shots with that one. Okay, so now we've got the Hazardous Smoke, which is a new offering from Project X in Hazardous range. This is coming in now at 60 grams, so again, five grams heavier than the previous shaft here. So we're seeing this sort of five gram increment here as we're going into sort of a shaft that play a little bit firmer, a little bit more stable, but also adding that little bit of weight there. So typically as the swing speed possibly gets a little bit quicker for that certain golfer, then you move into that slightly heavier, a little bit more of a controlling sort of shaft. So we're starting to come out of that sort of lightweight category here, more in a sort of midweight. And with this one and the next one, which is the even flow, there is custom offerings of the 80 and 85 gram options here, which is basically going even heavy again. So you've got to think like wall thickness has got to go thicker to make the, the shaft heavier there. So that obviously makes the shaft play a little bit more stable again, maybe for that even quicker sort of swing speed. But again, I think it's a big feel aspect because 80 gram, 85 gram is pretty heavy. So most golfers will probably struggle with that particular weight. So that is probably a very small sort of market here really. So let's get this first one hit here with the hazardous smoke and straight away this weight feels much more comfortable to me, much more of a balance that I prefer um, in a driver anyway. So let's get this first one hit. Yeah, so straight away that feels much more solid, much more sort of stable through the swing, through the hitting area there. And that's quite a nice sort of straight one there, 294. So it's not my longest there by any means. Um, it's been there at 2,800. Now the real beauty with these shafts that tights are offering in these four options that these are, there's no upcharge for these particular shafts, which is where they get the name stock shaft. But you've got to be careful here because I think many golfers who say, oh, it's got a stock shaft in there, they just automatically think that's a cheaper shaft. It's a watered down version of the real McCall here, McCall. But these are the actual 
real deal here. So there's no sort of cheaper watered down version with the same sort of graphics as you get in the expensive shafts. These are the real McCaw proper shaft offerings here from Titleist. So, which is a good thing really, because obviously, you know, you guys want to be playing the, the sort of quality that the tour guys are sort of getting offered basically. With, and this is basically what these are, but with no upcharge, which is good. Look at this second one hit here. Okay, so that wasn't the best of hits. That's a little bit high toe. That's turning over a little bit left there. That was a bit more my strike than anything there. That's probably the first real weak one I've hit, to be honest. Um, yeah, so see that high toe strike there. See, that brings my spin down to 1700. That's more the strike, really, than the, what the shaft's in there. Because you've got two, first two sh shots with that was 2800 spin, that's 1700. So that's purely just the strike location I've hit that, which is changing that spin number. Okay, so there's five shots hit with the hazardous smoke. Just finished on one there, 304. Have turned that over a little bit. Didn't quite get the control I wanted with that, yet it did feel a little bit more better or a bit more towards what I would like to sort of feel in a shaft here. But again, you've got to try and get the balance here feel with a control and obviously the numbers to try and maximize your sort of distance. But let's move on to the last shaft here, which is the even flow T1100. And we'll see how that one performs. That was a pretty quick uh, shaft change there, a bit like the pit stops at F1 there. So now into the even flow T1100, which is a 65 gram. So again, five grams heavier than the previous one. Again, stiff, and this is more of a, of a strong fiber construction that um, Titus is saying here. So that's given very much of a, a tip stable shaft here to try and control that head. So probably more suited to that stronger player. So this should be on paper a little bit more suited towards me than the other three shafts here. Um, it, again, there's an offering here of an 85 gram for the real strong player who prefers that heavier sort of feel in the shaft. But straight away there, I'm definitely starting to feel the weight here now. Going back to that um, sort of lightweight category, the 50 and 55 gram, definitely starting to feel a little bit more weight here under that handle in the shaft area here. And obviously that just takes the weight away from the club head a little bit more. So let's get this first one hit with the even flow. Okay, yeah, straight away, nice ball flight there, a little bit more forward penetrating flight there. Be interested to see what that's spinning like. So that was just short of the 300 mark there. Didn't quite get all that in all fairness, two and a half thousand spin there, but it did give it a little bit more of a penetrating flight there, but felt very stable there. Didn't feel any sort of give in the shaft um, as, as much as the lighter ones there through that impact area. Yeah, I felt really solid. Slightly changing the sound of the acoustics there. Maybe as that shaft gets a little bit heavy, a little bit firm, it just slightly, um, not as quite as loud as maybe the uh, lighter ones. I could be wrong there. That's two and a half thousand spin, 164 ball speed there. Feels really sort of solid to me, look much more suited towards my swing speed anyway. Okay, right, so there's five shots hit with the even flow. The feel was miles better for me, personally. Now, I know my swing speed's on the quicker side here, and you probably sat there watching this thinking, well, this is absolutely no relevant in terms of the lighter shafts, but I just wanted to maybe give you an idea of the differences between it, even at my speed. And again, your speed's different to maybe the next guy out on the range here. So um, this exactly it's not exactly tuned into me. I would probably normally be an X Flex. Now, me trying to get a hold of four shafts in X Flex is especially in that 55 and 50 gram shaft is hard to do. I'm not sure even if Titus offer an X in those lightweight shafts. It's such a, a sort of peculiar option in a way. Um, so I've, I've tried to keep the flexes all the same. 
uh, the lengths all the same, the head and the setting all the same. Yeah, it's not quite dialed into my speed, but it's to give you guys a bit of an idea of how these sort of shafts are sort of changing as we as we go into weight flex and, and performance of these shafts. So without further ado, let's jump into these numbers. Let's see how those shafts are performing and what the differences are between those four options. Okay, so first look, we're gonna look at dispersion rings here between the four shafts. So the white one is actually the lightweight uh, option, which was quite a tight little number, to be fair. The blue one was the 55 gram tensile, the yellow was the smoke hazardous in 60, and then the red one was the last one there, which is the even flow. So clearly see the red one there, a little bit smaller, but a little bit further in terms of distance as well. Okay, so we're gonna have a look at the gray boxes in particular, because these are the averages uh, between these uh, different clubs here. So the, the top box we've got here is, I've just lost the date up above here, but this is basically the 50 gram one. This is for all the 55 gram ones. This gray box is for all the 60 ones, and then I'm gonna scroll up in a minute and the 65 will get an average at the moment. So we'll look at um, 50 gram first here, so clubhead speed 150. More important, we're gonna look at the spin here. So launch 11 degrees, spinning at 3,000 there, giving us a carry number of 273 and a peak height of 37. Moving into the Tensai 55, so five grams heavier, heavier, a little bit more of a, a mid-launch, moderate sort of spin number here. So very similar on the launch there, very similar on the ball speed. You see the spin was actually a little bit more there. I've got the first one very sort of spinning there at 360, so I'll probably just pop that up a tiny bit. Uh, peaking out 37 yards again and 266, so dropping off a little bit there, to be honest, even if we've gone into a little bit more weight. Then we're gonna look at the hazardous smoke 60. So again, five grams more, we've got 162, just, well, just short of 163, so a touch less ball speed. Launch should have touch out 12.3, but spin number you see coming down to two and a half thousand there, peaking at 36, and then we see a little jump now in distance up to 275. And then finally with the even flow 65 here, 115 club head, 164 ball speed, launching at 12 degrees, 26 spin, 37 peak height, 279. So obviously squeezing a little bit more out with the even flow, as that is no surprise there, because that is a bit more suited to me. Um, again, need to get those dialed in a little bit more. I would probably go into an x -Flex, which is what I fitted, was fitted for. I was fitted for the even flow, to be honest. Uh, but I'll probably more in an X-Flex, which will improve these numbers again. But this is just obviously for demonstration purposes between these different shafts, weights, and uh, play uh, characteristics. Right, there we have it, guys. So interesting shaft test there between the stock options for the Titleist TS uh, driver range here. And as I say, these, uh, these options here are no upcharge. Uh, but they're the real deal shafts. They're not watered down, cheaper versions that go into the stock shafts, and then you're paying extra for the proper shafts. These are the real deals here. Yes, there's still custom uh, options, as in what I would call exotic shafts here, so which you've got to pay, obviously, upcharges on them on top of the actual cost of the driver. But I think probably the majority of golfers will get into one of those four shafts because they've got picked four shafts there, suiting different levels of speed here. So Titleist, uh, in this terms of the driver, isn't just aimed at that better player. I think this is where sometimes I think Titleist in the past have just just come unfold a little bit because it's sort of pushing it towards that better player but you know if i get that uh, very slow swing speed here who needs some spin needs to get that ball in the air then clearly going to go into something like the kurokage uh, in that uh, 50 gram or even that 10 side blue in that 55 just try and get that launch up which i sort of saw in my particular numbers there then maybe as the speed increases and the player may want to sort of feel a little bit more weight maybe a little bit more stable maybe trying to control launch control spin a little bit more um, then maybe the, into the hazardous smoke or possibly then the even flow. So four different shaft options suiting four different levels of golfers there uh, in terms of speed and how they deliver that golf club. So again, it really proves a point that you've got to go and get fitted. We've got all the options here at Lytham Golf Academy. So, you know, TS3 heads, TS2 heads, all the shaft options there. We've got them in different lengths, we've got them in different flexes also. So definitely come and get fitted. Uh, good launch monitor, good fitter, and we can really sort of dial those numbers in and get the club to work perfectly for you. So let me know guys in the comment section down below in this video in terms of which sort of shaft you possibly you might think you'll go into or um, what shaft are you playing at the moment and maybe give me a reason why. Have you been fitted for that shaft or was it just purely a, a trial and a field purpose that gave you the sort of results that you quite visually like? Really interested to know how you've got to your current gaming driver or current gaming shaft uh, in your particular club. Okay, hope you enjoyed the videos. Uh, if you are doing that, obviously, who hit that subscribe button if you haven't done so already, very much appreciated. It allows me to get access to more clubs to test, review, and get these videos out to you guys. So thanks very much for watching, and hopefully we'll catch up with you all very soon.